What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. So, as you can see, your girl chopped it off. I know if you guys watched the last video, you know the whole process that I went through and why I even cut it, which was attributed to recovering from my surgery of my kidney transplant. And actually, I'm starting to love it. Starting to love it. It is a very difficult transition as I've had long hair my entire life. I'm just going with the flow and making it work. So guys, before we get started, I want you to know that I do read every comment, every message in my DMs across all social media platforms. And so I take those into consideration as I'm creating these videos. And I'm really just trying to appeal to the masses of us who are dealing with kidney disease. With that being said, I will be posting every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I got a new haircut, a new kidney, it's super important to me to get to you and reach you guys this year. So today's video, I did want to discuss something that while I was dealing with dialysis prior to my transplant, this is something that I couldn't quite speak about because I was still processing it myself. And I've realized over the course of the time that I've had this channel that a lot of you are dealing with this as well. I've gotten more comments about this than I think I have anything. And that is depression, mental health, just struggling with going on dialysis, going into kidney failure, just the abrupt life change that is kidney disease. I can't emphasize enough that you are not alone. I am going to give you some things that I did to cope with those same feelings that I've experienced. And sometimes even post-transplant, the inconveniences that are the doctor's visits, the inconveniences that are the medication that I'll be on for the rest of my life, even side effects that I'm still experiencing now as we speak are still things that don't have the most positive effect on my mental health. Okay, at the end of the day, a transplant is just a treatment. I still have kidney disease. I always like to give this disclaimer. I am not a doctor. I am not a licensed therapist. This is not something that I've studied or even know much about outside of myself. I just have this channel to share my experience. So please, please consult somebody who can really give you the mental health care that you need for your specific needs. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I have created just a list of five coping mechanisms that I still utilize to this day, dealing with how kidney disease affects my mental health. Number one, therapy. Therapy. I suggest therapy to anyone and everyone outside of having kidney disease or being on dialysis. Like therapy is a great tool to utilize. But as a dialysis patient or as a kidney transplant patient or as a kidney failure patient, I think it's pertinent. That is a life altering, semi-traumatic event or super traumatic event, depending on who it is. And I was fortunate enough to receive my dialysis care from a clinic that actually provided a social worker slash therapist that I could talk to on staff that saw dialysis patients every single day. So she understood. It was probably one of the most important parts of going to that clinic. Her name was Amanda. Amanda came and checked on me every single visit, like, hey, just let you know I'm here. You ever need anybody to talk to, I'm here. I resisted it first. I did. I really resisted at first. The whole thing, I was just kind of like, can't believe I'm here. I'm upset. I'm pissed off that I have to be here until it settled and I knew that I needed somebody to talk to and she was there every day just waiting like, come on, girl. Whenever you're ready, I'm here. And so eventually I accepted that warm embrace and it helped me tremendously. Number two, I picked up a hobby that I hadn't done in years so much to where i kind of considered it a new hobby i started to draw and it was therapy in and of itself i mean i'd spend hours on hours on these drawings and 
it was something that I could control. I could create. I had full control of it. I think sometimes with kidney disease, you feel like the control is up in the air. You know, you never know. Sometimes no matter what you do, your body is going through its process, even if it's something that you don't want it to go through. Drawing gave me something that was mine. I could create from nothing and it could be exactly what I wanted it to be. And it made me feel empowered and proud of myself and that I was still capable. So if there is something that you have time for on the side, obviously I was going through this during the pandemic, but if you do, not even if, this is something that if it helps, you should make time for yourself to do. Do something that is yours and yours alone. Number three, staying physically active was something that was important. I think what comes with kidney disease is a decrease in your physical capabilities. If it's because of fatigue or if it's because of the soreness from you know, the surgeries or the catheter placements, you know, just all these things that seem to debilitate you. I fought against that with engaging in more physical activity, as long as it was okay with my doctor. So I consulted my doctor, my actual nephrologist about this. You do deal with blood pressure issues while having kidney disease or being on dialysis. But for me, he was like, go for it. My blood pressure was regulated. I was actually on blood pressure medication. So that was something that we did have to consider when it came to me working out. Also, I've spoken to a couple of you guys about how it's the inability to gain weight because of what your body is dealing with because of dialysis. Like I said, emphasizing consulting with your doctor prior to this, but building muscle, weightlifting. Working out isn't always just running or doing cardio like weightlifting, which helps to build muscle. That's something that I love. So that was a huge way that I coped. Number four, I did so much research about kidney disease, the causes of my specific disease. There's so many clinical trials going on around about different ways to transplant patients. Like I did my research. There was nothing that anybody outside of me could tell me about the disease that I had, about kidney disease, about dialysis that I didn't already know. I wanted all the information that I could possibly get so I understood what I was dealing with. This is something that is going to forever be a part of me. Nobody knows us like we know us. Any disease is now a part of us. So I want nothing more than to know everything about it because it is me, I'm it. The more I understood it, the less scared I was of it. The more I understood it, the more capable I felt. I think really understanding of the disease, doing as much research as possible, made me feel stronger. Made me understand that it was gonna be okay. I think more than anything, it made me understand like my life, if I choose it to be, can still be a beautiful, beautiful life. And I still have the option to go and live my life the way that I want to. The fifth and final way that I coped, and I'm going to clump kind of a bunch of things that I would consider number five. And this for me might be the most important. Prayer, meditation, and journaling. Journaling to get my thoughts outside of my head and onto paper where I could process them was a life changer for me. Once I finally journaled in a way where this was just for me and nobody else, because that's what journaling really is. It's just a lot of times we're so afraid to get what's in our mind out because we don't want to express it for the fear of weakness or for the fear of actually having to confront the real feelings. Like once I got past all of that and I journaled in a way that really got all of my thoughts out of my heart or out of my head onto this paper so they could become real and I could finally deal with them. That changed everything. Prayer has always been a big part of my life. That's almost like first and foremost for me. Like my relationship with God is like first and foremost for me. Like that helps me get through every single thing, every day, every hour, every minute. So that's kind of a given for me. And I think sometimes that falters because I'm human, but I'm so grateful for my foundation and my faith because 
my fear, my worries, it all eventually starts to seem so small. But then to process those thoughts, like what am I feeling today? And where, where is that coming from? And I think one of the most significant parts about journaling is sometimes I can find it where I can contradict myself. I have these thoughts in my mind where I may say negative things or I may think ne negative things. And then two paragraphs down, talk about the things that I've done over the course of my life while dealing with dialysis. And those two things be the truth at the same time. They can't. They contradict each other. And so now I've conquered and erased some self-doubt. I really hope this is something that helped you guys. I hope that one of these practices or all of these practices will help you in some way. If you're watching this, you're fighting. If nobody else is reminding you, I'm going to remind you. You're here. You're fighting. Keep fighting. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I am a testimony to that. And I want to continue to share my story to show you, like, I've been there and here. And then back there and now here again. So everything is possible. Just continue to believe in yourself. Continue to pray. Continue to journal. Continue to find something that's yours to gain and get your control back. Continue to do those things. And then before long, you're gonna be like me, looking back and be like, wow, like 2020 was crazy, was insane for me. I couldn't believe what my life was back then. And it felt like it was gonna be never ending. And here I am living my best, pixie cut life you can do it too i love you guys thank you so much for watching just a reminder i am up every tuesday at 2 p.m pacific standard time and i hope to see you guys then in the meantime stay strong keep pushing and i'll see you in my next video